Welcome to episode two. So we're going to talk about what happens during your first appointment with an integrative psychiatrist and how you can best prepare for the appointment and get the most out of it. So you've made the decision to see an integrative psychiatrist, but it might feel a little bit overwhelming if you don't know what to expect or what they're going to ask you or how you can really prepare for it. So let's look at what to expect, how to prepare and what to do if you actually don't like your psychiatrist. This channel is all about holistic approaches to mental health, so if you want to learn more about that, then go ahead and subscribe. I'm Dr. Nishi Bhopal. I'm a physician specializing in integrative psychiatry and sleep medicine, and I'm the founder of Pacific Integrative Psychiatry, which is an online telepsychiatry practice based in California. Before we jump into this video, I want to invite you to grab my free holistic mini course on natural ways to overcome anxiety and sleep issues. You can grab the mini course on our website, Pacific Integrative psych.com forward slash mini course. The link is in the screen here and also in the video description below. All right, this is episode two in our series on understanding integrative psychiatry. The first episode was all about what integrative psychiatry is. Today, we're gonna to talk about how you can prepare for your first session and what to expect. So I just wanna acknowledge that it can be a little bit nerve wracking when you're going to go see a mental health practitioner, especially a new psychiatrist. So it's totally normal to feel nervous before your first session. Talking about mental health, especially your own mental health challenges, is very vulnerable. So if you're feeling nervous about your first appointment or you're a little bit hesitant to even make an appointment, you're not alone with that. The other thing that happens is sometimes when people get to their appointment, they might freeze up a little bit or kind of go blank during the session because they're a little bit nervous or they're just feeling a bit vulnerable and it's hard to open up with someone you don't know for the first time. So again, that's totally normal if that happens to you. And there are some ways to deal with this because one of the things I hear all the time from my patients is they'll reach out to me after the session or in the next session, they'll be like, oh yeah, I totally forgot to tell you this last time or I forgot to bring that up. So how you can deal with this feeling of being nervous or going blank or forgetting to mention the things you wanted to talk about is to come in with notes. I actually love it when people come to me with notes and an agenda for what they wanna talk about because that really helps guide our discussion to make sure that we are addressing the things that are important to you. So write down some of the things that you want to ask your psychiatrist, write down things that you want to work on, even write down specific situations or examples of situations that were triggering for you, because that really helps us understand um, what's going on and, and how the symptoms are, are showing up for you in your everyday life. The other way you can prepare is to gather any medical records or blood work or other lab tests you've had beforehand, like if you have gut testing, we're an integrative practice and we have a functional nutritionist, so we're interested in that gut health piece or any other functional testing you've had before. Gather that all up ahead of time if you can. Sleep studies as well. I'm a sleep doctor, so I like to look at previous sleep studies too. So whatever you have, get it all together and see if there's a way you can send it to your psychiatrist ahead of time. So in our practice, we have a patient portal where people can go ahead and just upload that stuff before their first session, um, or it can be done in other ways as well. So it's a good idea to, to gather that stuff. And if you don't have it all ready before your first session, that's okay. But it's a good idea to kind of work on getting all of those documents because that's really gonna help your integrative psychiatrist because we do take a whole body approach and we're interested in looking at um, all of those things. Like I say, we like to look under the hood to see what else might be going on. And the next tip that I recommend before your first session is to get a list of all the medications you're taking, whether they're psychiatric meds or even non-psychiatric meds, you know, what type of birth control you might be taking or if you're taking something for heartburn or cholesterol or anything else. So have a list of all of those medications because we do take that information into account as well. And then also bring in a list of your supplements. Now, I like to know exactly what supplements people are taking and what brands and what formulation because all of that information is gonna be really helpful as we formulate a personalized plan. And sometimes what I, I tell people to do is just line everything up. So if you have a whole host of supplements you're taking, just line them all up and take a photo. That's, that's helpful as well. And you can send that ahead of time. Okay, so one of the things people get really nervous about is what are they gonna ask me? What are we gonna talk about? Usually the first session is the longest and it's usually the most comprehensive. Some integrative psychiatrists do one and a half or two hour sessions. I used to do that too, but I feel like it was a bit overwhelming for people. So what we do now in, in my practice is we divide the first two sessions up into two one-hour sessions, usually spaced out about a week or two apart. 
then we'll talk about what's going on in your life now. Uh, what types of symptoms are you struggling with? What are your major challenges? What are your goals for your personal mental health and wellness? We'll also look at past treatments that you've had, any medical issues, family history. Um, in our practice, we are really interested in nutrition and gut health and diet and digestion. So we'll go into detail on all of those things as well. We also like to look at family history and trauma that you may have experienced. We look to look at childhood issues. Um, so there's so many things to look at and that's why we do this in, in two one-hour sessions because it can just be a lot to do in one session and it can be a bit overwhelming. So having those two sessions um, spaced out also gives both of us time, me as the, the doctor who's going to help guide you and the patient, it gives both of us time to kind of digest and process everything so that we can be more effective as we kind of formulate a plan moving forward. So those first few sessions are typically information gathering, and then as we have a better sense of what's going on, then we'll start working on a treatment plan and following up on your progress at future sessions. If this type of information is helpful for you, go ahead and click the like button. Okay, so you're in your first session. How do you make the most of it? I encourage people to take notes, whether you wanna do that on a piece of paper and just a pen kind of analog style, or if you wanna do it digitally on a Google Doc or on notes on your phone, whatever system works for you, I highly encourage you to take notes because you'll be going through a lot of information, you'll be receiving a lot of information, and it can be hard to remember everything afterwards. I do this as well. When I see my functional medicine doctor, I like to take notes because we just go through so much and it's hard to keep it all straight and remember it all afterwards. The next thing to get the most out of your session is to be fully honest and transparent. And I know there's sometimes things that are embarrassing or you don't really want to share. And you don't have to share anything that you don't feel entirely comfortable sharing, but don't hold back for fear of being judged. Your doctor is not there to judge you, they are there to help you and to guide you. And it's hard for them to fully guide you if they don't have all the relevant information. The third tip to get the most out of your sessions is to ask questions and clarify. If you don't understand something or you didn't quite catch something, maybe you're taking notes and you missed the last thing they said, it's okay to interrupt and, and go back and ask them to clarify. You wanna make sure that you are fully on board and understanding the plan because the time is for you and the plan needs to work for you. The doctor is there as a guide to help you achieve your goals. The fourth tip is to ask your doctor what their protocol is if you need to reach out between sessions, if you have questions, if you have uh, lab tests you want forwarded to them or if you need paperwork filled out. Every office is gonna have their own policies around this kind of stuff. So clarify that with the doctor or at least with the administrative assistant um, so that you know exactly what to expect. So in our practice, we do have an administrative assistant who helps people navigate all the non-clinical stuff, scheduling and um, you know, admin tasks and things like that. And we also have a patient portal. So that's fully secure. And so you can you know, feel comfortable uploading lab results and, and any other um, confidential information into our patient portal. It also allows for messaging with your practitioner between sessions. So check with your, your doctor to see what their system is uh, set up like and what their policies are, are around these things. Okay, what happens next? It's at the end of your session, now what? So at the end of your first intake or your first couple intake sessions, generally you may get some preliminary recommendations. Sometimes the recommendation is just to schedule another appointment to kind of go deeper into your history to figure out what the most appropriate plan is going to be. Sometimes the recommendations might include doing additional blood work or other testing or gut health testing or functional medicine testing. Sometimes you may get a referral to another specialist. Sometimes you may get a recommendation to start a medication to support you or to start a certain regimen of supplements to support you. Then after the session, it's not unusual for people to think of questions that they didn't ask during the session itself. That's totally fine. And so what I recommend to people is to just write it down in your notes, whether, you know, whatever system you're using for your notes, put the questions in there and then bring them to your next session. If these are questions that can't wait for your next session, it's something that needs to be addressed beforehand. Again, it's good to know your uh, doctor's policy on reaching out to them between sessions. Uh, in our practice, we do have a patient portal so people can send us questions that way between sessions. And then at the end of your session, after your session, take some time to reflect. Reflect on how it went, on how you felt, and whether you think that this doctor is, is the right person for you. 
Sometimes you might not know right away. Sometimes it does take a few sessions to really gauge that. And if that's something you're interested in, in hearing more about, we can do another video on what to do if your therapist or your psychiatrist isn't the right fit. If you wanna hear more about that, then let me know in the comments. In the next episode, we are going to look at how integrative psychiatry can help with sleep. Have you ever seen an integrative psychiatrist? Go ahead and let us know in the comments.